Hi everyone, welcome to lecture 4 entitled Origin of Life. In this lecture we're going to be looking at the origins of life and where life actually comes from and before we get into that we want to understand one term and this is going to be our first flowchart of the Origin of Life lecture series. This first flowchart is going to be entitled The Chemical Evolution. This chemical evolution concept is an idea that's based off of evidence and that evidence comes from the fossils. So we have fossil evidence to prove that the chemical evolution occurred and we'll talk about its details in just a second but the fossil evidence mainly states that the origin of life the first let's say microorganisms that we see on earth and we can write this down first microorganisms they arose at about 3.5 billion years ago. So we're going to write 3.5 BYA. That'll represent billion years ago. So that's what our fossil evidence tells us. So let's look at the chemical evolution in a little bit more detail. We have to first look at a specific hypothesis. There's a hypothesis that states, and let's write this down, there's a hypothesis about the chemical evolution, this hypothesis is that life developed from non-living matter. That is our chemical evolution hypothesis. This hypothesis entails a couple of different things. One of those things, one of those beliefs behind this hypothesis comes from the idea of abiotic synthesis. Abiotic is another term for something without life, against or without life. This a prefix means without and bio is referring to life. So this is the without life synthesis. What does abiotic synthesis really mean? This hypothesis involves the abiotic synthesis, and the abiotic synthesis is this idea that there was a spontaneous, and let's make sure we underline this, this is a key word here, spontaneous formation of small organic molecules. And we talked a lot about organic molecules, those biological molecules based off of organic chemistry. Their original formation was spontaneous. They happened out of nowhere, without life. So life developed from non-living matter because of something like the abiotic synthesis that we see. It's a spontaneous formation of small organic molecules. So let's talk a little bit more about those organic molecules. Organic molecules. This hypothesis also states something about these guys. Organic molecules, specifically organic macromolecules, let's say, so we'll write this down as macromolecules came from two small organic molecules combining together. That's a very basic fact, and it's a fact that's part of this hypothesis. So macromolecules come from two small organic molecules combining. Simple, easy, we understand that, we know that this process happens. Um, let's think maybe two things that possibly combine to start life would be, let's say, proteins and maybe a nucleic acid. Those two things combined together formed a nice macromolecule um, that we now understand as an organic living matter coming from non-living. So, so far we stated that this hypothesis of life coming from non-living matter involves the abiotic synthesis. Basically, it happened spontaneously, and it involved organic molecules, macromolecules coming together from individual molecules. Another part of this hypothesis is the idea of protocells. Protocells. This is a new term. Proto is a prefix that means first, and we're talking about the first cells. The first cells were simply defined, we can say, as just droplets with an enclosing membrane. This was all that was needed to define a cell. The first cells. Droplets with enclosing membrane. Simple as that. What's the point of this? Why does this define a cell? 
How is this defined as something that was life that came from non-life? Basically, a protocell was only the only interesting, or let's say the only fact about it that gave it this idea of life was that we were finally able to maintain, and this is important, maintain a separate internal environment. I'm going to underline that. A separate internal environment that's different than what? Different than the surroundings. And we'll talk about the surroundings of Earth in these early, early times within life, but it's just important to note that these protocells were the first cells that were able to sort of independently develop an interior, an internal environment completely separate from its exterior, from its surrounding environment. Before that, whatever the exterior was, that's what the interior was, but because of this enclosing membrane, the membrane that developed, this allowed the separation of internal and external. And the last part of this hypothesis that we'll cover in this video is the idea of self-replicating molecules. This hypothesis of life developing from non-living matter also involves the origin of self-replicating molecules. In order for life to happen, you have to have replication. You have to have things building off of other things, and this has to be happening um, in living organisms. And this happened. This origin of self-replicating molecules is what allowed inheritance to occur. So it led to the establishment of inheritance. So overall, we've learned so far in the chemical evolution, we have fossil evidence that states that our first microorganisms came about 3.5 billion years ago. And the major hypothesis involved with this chemical evolution, let's say, of going from chemistry into biology, going from chemicals into living matter, was the idea that life developed from non-living chemical matter. This involved things like abiotic synthesis, the spontaneous formation of small molecules, and then that eventually led to organic macromolecules, and that eventually led to protocells, and those protocells eventually became self-replicating molecules. This is a stepwise process that led to life developing from non-living matter. In our next video, we'll look at the four requirements of chemical evolution.